Hello and welcome to the Isle of Rassi distillery. My name is Callum Gillis. I'm a brand ambassador for the distillery and we're actually on Rassi in our warehouses where we mature our Scotch whisky. And it's probably the best place to answer a question that comes up a lot when we're showing folks around the distillery or when people come to visit us here. How do you mature Scotch whisky? And actually what makes a Scotch whisky? What happens in the warehouse here to turn what we create, you make spirit in the stills into a legal single malt Scotch whisky. And well, again, hopefully this is the best place to answer it. We'll have a look around the warehouse. I'll show you the different casks and explain a little bit about just what makes the maturation so special when it comes to creating a single malt. Now, if you like what we're doing here, remember to like our video. And of course, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here for more videos like this. But without any further ado, let's go explore the warehouse. So let's start off with the basics. This is a cask. And of course, to create a malt whisky in Scotland, we have to only use barley, water and yeast in the distillation process to create the spirit and we have to fill it into one of these casks for a minimum of three years. Now it has to be distilled in Scotland to call it a Scotch whisky and it has to be matured and bottled in Scotland to call it a Scotch whisky. And on Rassay we go one step further. No spirit leaves the island until it is in a bottle as a Scotch whisky. Every drop of Rassay single malt is distilled, matured, bottled, labelled and dispatched here from this small island that we actually create the whiskey on. So looking a little bit closer uh, at the face of the cask, different distilleries tend to mark their casks in different ways. For us, we have the name of the distillery, obviously. We have the year in which it was filled and we have the number in the year. So this was the 391st cask of 20. 20. Uh, some distilleries, again, will name them in slightly different ways or have slightly different numbering schemes. But if you walk through our distillery, you'll notice lots of different numbers, lots of different years going all the way back to 2017, because of course that's when we filled our very first cask. So when you come into our distillery, one of the things you'll probably notice is the wide variety of casks. Just right here, you can see we've got sherry casks, smaller sherry casks, we've got X rye casks, fresh casks, wine casks. Now, what does all that mean? Well, in Scotland, we can only mature in oak casks. So all casks have to be oak. But of course, there is a wide variety of oak. And of course, the casks that we use in the industry tend to have been filled before. We don't tend to use brand new fresh casks. Uh, what we tend to use is casks that once contained, you know, American whiskies or sherries or wines. Now for us, we use mainly these casks, which are ex-rye whisky casks. So casks made by, well, in this case, the Woodford Reserve Rye a distillery in Kentucky. We also use these casks, which are slightly different, slightly larger, um, use a different type of oak. So you're looking at Quercus Alba here. You're looking at Quercus Petraea and Quercus Ruba mixed into this cask. And these are ex wine casks. They come from the Bordeaux region of France. We draw them from a number of different chateaus out there. And then finally, probably the most distinctive in terms of the fact that it's the most clean and newest looking are these chinkpin oak casks. Now, chinkpin oak is another form of oak, it's Quercus melonbergi, and these casks are also fresh. They're brand new, you've got these clean bands on them, beautiful fresh oak. Uh, you get, of course, a completely different flavour to all three different casks. So if you imagine all three of these being combined together, uh, also consider the fact that we make peated and unpeated spirit, which is maybe something we'll talk about in another video, it means you're getting this huge range of characteristics and flavours coming together to create our whisky. Now, when these casks are filled, they are rolled into our warehouse here. And as you can see, in our warehouse, we're keeping them on their side here. Now, this is sort of where uh, the, the differentiation happens. We have dunnage style, as we call it, and we have palletized style. Now, in the dunnage style, dunnage tends to refer to the old-fashioned whiskey warehouses. Casks would be kept on their side, flat like this, and if they are to be stacked on top of each other, they're done usually three high using rows of wood. The casks are literally rolled onto the wood, they're left there then to mature. You're getting nice even contact between both ends of the cask and throughout the length of the staves as well. The other form that we use is called palletized, and palletized means the casks are stacked on their end, the pallets are then stacked up and up and up to the roof, and they can be kept in a much smaller space, but obviously a much larger volume. So as opposed to the dunnage storage, this is our palletized storage. Now, palletized storage obviously means that you can get a lot more casks into a smaller space. But of course, they're all still matured here on Rassay. Our dunnage warehouse is literally right next door. And they're all still getting the same conditions. They're getting the atmosphere flowing through the warehouses. Now, that's an important point for Scotch whiskey. 
Remember, the maturation process is turning a clear, colourless liquid that's come out of our stills and creating something that has a completely unique flavour profile depending on the distillery or the cask that you're using. And a big part of that is the interaction of the oak and the spirit and, of course, the atmosphere outside. These casks are, you know, essentially breathing. They're porous. The liquid is moving and evaporating out of the casks. The air is moving through them. The wood itself is expanding and closing over time. The warehouses right now are quite cold. We're in the middle of winter, but in the summertime, they'll heat up a little bit. And of course, the rate of evaporation, because remember, the spirit's evaporating in here all the time. The condensation, everything is going to change slightly. Of course, that's why to us, it's very important where you mature your spirit. We want to ensure that our spirit gets as much of the characteristics of the island as possible. We're only a few meters away from the sea here. You've got the salt and the sea air moving through our warehouses. And then you have all this lovely interaction between the oak and the cask. Of course, that sense of place is really important to us because remember, the wording of the law is that all Scotch whisky must be matured in Scotland to call it a Scotch whisky. And of course, it has to also be matured in oak in Scotland and bottled here. But of course, that doesn't mean that the spirit has to be matured in the place that it was distilled. And nowadays, a lot of spirit is transported away from the distillery, matured elsewhere, bottled elsewhere. And of course, it might spend a few days being distilled in the early days, and then it might spend a few days as a bottle in the gift shop. And that's about as much time as it actually spends in the place that it says that it comes from. For us, everything is here on Rassi. What you see is what you get. And one of my favorite aspects of the Dunnage warehouse that we have here, which is quite typical in these older warehouses, is the porous soil floor. Essentially what we have here is the airflow moving throughout this warehouse. We have channels that run around the walls and the air can travel in, up and under, or around the distillery and move around the casks via these floors here as well too. It helps contribute again to that idea of the atmosphere seeping in and out through the casks themselves. Remember, the spirit is evaporating at all times. It's eating into the wood, it's developing flavor, but of course it is evaporating. You're losing one to 2% per year from these casks. This cask was filled in 2021. Opening this up, it'll probably be pretty full still. However, if I was opening a cask that was four or five years old, you'd notice that level had dropped. And of course, if you open a cask that's 20, 30 years old, you'll notice that's dropped very, very far indeed. The size of the cask can have an impact on that as well. Smaller casks will evaporate at a faster rate. And also, the alcohol level that it's filled in can have an effect on that. It can also have an effect on the way the spirit develops and the flavors that you get from it as well too. It's a little bit like a fractal. The, the closer you look at every aspect of the spirit making process and the maturation process, the more complex it gets. The wood type, the freshness of the cask, the charring of the cask, where it sits in the warehouse, the ambient temperature in the room, the airflow moving throughout it, where in Scotland the actual cask and the, the spirit itself is kept. And of course, the final combination of flavors drawn from this huge variety of casks that in our case we have here on site. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an insight into the maturation process, how we mature our spirit here in Scotland and specifically on Rassi itself. Remember, if you like this, feel free to like the video. You can subscribe for more. And if you've got any other questions about Scotch whiskey, maybe things you've always wanted to know, things about the whiskey making process, things from behind the scenes, well, we can show them to you. Leave a comment down below. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.